Hello, wonderful. It is Sarah K. Ramsey here to talk about grieving today. And I have my grieving hair and my snuggly clothes because when I grieve, um, that's what I do, right? I find comfort in small things. Um, I even painted my nails black in the process of grieving um, this week. And I want to tell you about the month I've had as we discuss grieving. Um, and I kind of went back and took inventory of it and went, oh wow, there was a car wreck that involved like the jaws of life and a helicopter. And then I'm about to go to my third funeral and my kids lost their grandparents and several family members had COVID and there's sickness and death. And then there was a family friend and Ben said, okay, I need you to come to the funeral with me. I said, no problem. And then it ends up that the funeral is of the lady of a church we had been um, visiting, the kids that I had been visiting. And it was the lady who had, was in charge of like the, all these kids activities and she'd committed suicide. And it has just been like, boom, 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 boom. Like, uh, domino after domino after domino this month. Okay. And I've had a really good run of it, right? I've had the Mrs. Tennessee pageant and Paris and London and being an international speaker and all these summits. It's been an amazing run, even in the midst of COVID, even in the midst of the craziness of the, the U S election recently, it, it was just, I've had a really good run. Oh, and I had a, my anniversary trip canceled. So <laughs> something else that happened, which isn't like the worst thing, but it's a disappointment if you think you're having a uh, a week at the beach with your husband um, to celebrate your anniversary. And then all of a sudden you're jerked home because the jaws of life had to get a, a son out of the car, right? This is a big deal and it's very emotionally draining. So how do we grieve when the feelings get too big? When we feel sad, when we have lost something, what do we do? How do we handle it? And I always hated to even call it how to grieve because it can definitely be individual and personal. So I'm, but I'm going to tell you how I grieve and to kind of help you walk through that. And one of the reasons I went back and listed all the things that have happened in the last month is because I needed to remember. We can be so hard on ourselves and think, oh, I should be over something. I should have more energy. I should be a better friend. I should be whatever. And when you start actually taking inventory and saying, whoa, this happened. And then this week, this happened. And then this week, this happened. And then this week, this happened. And you start taking inventory over those things. You give yourself a little more grace. And I asked the question, who would be good at that? Who would be good at this? Who would be good at handling all those things at the same time? Who would be good at uh, having a positive attitude? You know, when domino effect after domino effect after domino effect. Okay. And I do want to have a positive attitude. I hope you want to have a positive attitude, but cut yourself some slack. Give yourself a break when you start realizing, oh, all these things have happened. You, you can start to develop some grace with yourself again. Okay, so first step, take inventory of what's actually happened. I have a phrase that I use all the time. Get past the past. Get real about the present. So you can get serious about your future. And for you to get past the past and get real about the present, you have to actually acknowledge it. Oh, it's not that bad. I'm fine. Oh, you know, God's got this. Or I'm not saying God doesn't have this. I'm just saying like we tell ourselves all these phrases to for everyone else to think we're okay rather than naming the feelings. So one, what's actually happened? Two, name the feelings. Oh my gosh, there are so many times over the last month, like even yesterday, and I just, I prepared for yet another funeral, and I just went, <sighs> I'm sad. I am heartbroken. Uh, I am grieving. I am frustrated. I am angry. I am enraged. 
I am feeling hopeless. When you start to name some of those things, and I did yesterday, I just said about the situation, and I just said, I'm heartbroken. I'm heartbroken. I'm heartbroken. And when you can say, I'm heartbroken. You go ahead and deal with the fact that you're heartbroken rather than, oh, I'm fine. Not a problem. Put on a happy face. Oh, the sun will come out tomorrow. You know, always look for the silver lining. You can look for the silver lining, but there's something called a spiritual bypass. And it's when you don't acknowledge your humanity, you don't acknowledge the bad things have happened to you, you don't acknowledge the feelings, you just stuff, 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 stuff. And they come out in tension, they come out in headaches, they come out in irritable bowel syndrome, they come out in breast cancer, they come out in all these different things. Pretending you are not feeling what you are feeling is a bad strategy. Okay, so one, Whoa, what actually happened? Who would be good at this? Oh, this seems like a lot for anybody. Okay, I'm gonna have a little grace with myself. Two, what am I actually feeling? Name it and claim it, right? So what am I actually feeling? I'm feeling sad, I'm feeling heartbroken, I'm feeling frustrated, I'm feeling angry, I'm feeling whatever. Okay, that's what I'm feeling. Now, notice what I did not do. Oh, I shouldn't be feeling that way. I shouldn't be this, I shouldn't be that. And one of the reasons I didn't go to that place is because I named, first of all, what was actually going on. We started with what's going on. So I almost gave myself permission, and you can even write yourself permission. I gave myself permission. Oh, this is what's actually happening. This is what I feel about what's actually happening. Not I shouldn't, I should, I should be this, I should, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Don't get in that game of beating yourself up. That's why, who would be good at this? That's why you start there, okay? Then name your feelings. And then you can have a pity party, right? You can be sad. You don't have to, you can have your hair look like this. You can have snuggly clothes that feel warm and comforting to you when you don't feel warm and comforted. You can have an af afternoon off. You can take a nap. You can, you know, there's been several circumstances in the last month that like a friend's birthday, and I just said, I just, I just can't do it. I love this person. This person defended me at a time in my life when hardly anybody else was defending me. They stood up for me. When this person, in 50 years, I will still want to celebrate this person's birthday. They have been a rock solid place in my life. I miss her. And I had to tell her I couldn't do it. I said, I'm sad. I can't, I can't get up the energy to be happy tonight. Honest. I didn't ask her to fix it. I didn't ask her to feel sorry for me. I just said, look, this is all the stuff that's been going on. No one would be good at handling this. I, I, I've got to, you know, move past this. I, I've got to get, get better, right? To some extent. I mean, if you call a friend and phone a friend, she's, bit of phone call I've had when I have been upset, obviously. I said, oh, I'm not at a place to celebrate your birthday, <laughs> right? I'm not at a place to celebrate your birthday, okay? So honesty, right? Honest about your feelings, honest with others, okay? Then you need a plan not to stay there, okay? Have your pity party, really. Have your feelings, schedule it, and put a deadline. When you talk, if you've ever seen the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza, he talks about we practice difficult emotions or we practice negative emotions. If you've been in a toxic relationship, if you've been in a traumatic situation, if you've been in a horrific workplace, if you've been in whatever, you've probably practiced a lot of difficult emotions. You're good at getting to sad. You're good at getting depressed. You're good at getting to hopeless. You're good at getting to confused. You're good, like those emotions, you've had a lot of practice on. So it's easy for you to get to them. That is also dangerous. I want you to feel them. I want you to name them. I want you to acknowledge them. I don't want you to beat yourself up over them. And have a pity party. And then, then there's a time the party ends. The pity party's over. 
because if you don't start practicing more positive emotions, more energetic emotions, more um, life-giving emotions, then you're going to have more practice on the difficult ones, which are going to make it even more difficult for you to feel the difficult emotions. Because our bodies memorize the chemical compound of anger. Our bodies memorize the chemical compound of depression. Our bodies memorize the chemical compound of sadness. And if you haven't given your body and your life a dose of true happiness, I'm not talking about that fake it till you make it stuff. Or fake it to cover so everybody else thinks you're good. That's not leading by example. Sometimes we have to like, you know, put on a brave face to get through our, you know, a day with our kids. We're not crying on our children or ruining a certain situation at work. I'm not talking about that. But, you know, this life of like, oh, it's fine. I'll be good tomorrow. Oh, there's a lesson to be learned. That's spiritual bypassing. Be brave enough not to spiritually bypass. Whatever faith practice you are a part of, even if it's just like being spiritual, there are characters in, in your stories that exhibit grief. You are not better than them. Even, uh, you know, if you're from a Christian background, there's a Bible verse that says, Jesus wept. Are you better than Jesus? That you always have to put on the happy face? Right? Okay. Uh, so it's not who you want to be. So, uh, so then when you start to practice happy emotions again, I want you to find your flow. These lives are my flow. When I'm writing, I finished the, my book is probably 70, 80% finished right now. My writing is my flow. My coaching is my flow. My work is my flow. The Wonder Soulman program is my flow. Creating is my flow. Playing piano is my flow. But when I tap into my purpose, which is helping women navigate the world and create better lives after toxic relationships than they could have ever imagined having before the toxic relationship, when I connect with my, that, my purpose, I feel Sarah again and not just feel sadness. I feel creative, which helps me move forward, which helps me feel powerful. Okay? Now I want, I want to point out something because many of us in the group are a bit of helpaholics, which means we sometimes we end up spiritually bypassing our own stuff to try to help someone else. Okay. I don't, if you are sad, it makes you feel better to help someone else. And that is very well documented and good. And, and, and we want to be careful as we lead by example to not use someone else's need for us to be okay. That's like high level stuff here. Like I'm talking like ooh, higher form of human, like amazing women stuff here. We want to get, I, I talked about using the creativity and the flow and my sense of purpose to be okay and to get back to me. Not using others to say nice things about me or to say good things about me or to think I was a wonderful person or to get compliments from them or to be needed. Okay. And you're like, oh, Sarah, you're like getting me. You're getting me. I'm like, I know, I know, I know. Uh, but I want to differentiate the difference as we practice emotional healthiness, right? And emotional healthiness is filling up your cup and pouring out of the overflow rather than, oh, I'm sad. Can you fill up my cup? Ooh, I'll help you and then you can fill up my cup. Ooh, I'll do something nice for you and you can fill up my cup. Okay, you see the difference? Okay, we'll keep a watch on that. Um, acknowledge what's happened. Get real about it. Admit no one would be good at that. Uh, two, um, the, uh, what did I say? Two, oh my gosh, I can't believe I've drawn a blank. I'm still drinking my coffee right now. Uh, two, name it. Two, name it. Name those feelings, sorry. Uh, two, name those feelings. Um, then practice sadness. Do your pity party. 
but have a timeline, have a timer on it so that you do move on. Okay. One of the best ways to move on uh, is change the music, change the mood. Have a little dance party in your house. It's hard for me to be in a bad mood after hearing Stevie Wonder. I just can't do it. Right? I love Stevie Wonder. Um, like dancing in my car. And I was like dancing in my car this morning. Um, get back to you. Right? Have your pity party. And I'm not i I'm not making a light of that. Like grieve. Have a grief party. Be sad. Be, cry. And then don't practice sadness where your body memorizes sadness as normal. Move on to the next step and start to give your body um, the memorization of happiness and feeling powerful and feeling in flow and feeling connected into purpose again. I hope that helps. Um, and I hope I'm at my parents' house. You can see my sister's wedding picture behind. Can you see that? My Instagram people can't. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, it's not me. Uh, it's my sister. Uh, but I hope that helps you guys as you navigate grief. And don't put grief in this separate category of like, oh, if it's I'm missing a toxic person, it's something different. Name it. It's grief. It's grieving the life you thought you were going to have. Okay? And, and go from there. I hope that helps. I hope you have an awesome day.